Good morning, fellow punters. The clock on the wall says 20 minutes away from 8 o'clock. I'm here in the Galway Bay Hotel. He comes in Galiba, the city of the tribe, the town, the city that's scarce with custard, as it was again last night. We arrived into Galway, um, into Salt Hill, traffic brutal as usual, um, about five ish. Checked into the hotel now, so we drive into town. So we had dinner or lunch or early dinner or whatever in the Dal there of um, near the Keys bar. Grand food. I went with the Irish stew, beef stew, beef stew and mushrooms. There was more mushrooms than beef in it. I found a few bits of beef down near the bottom. And then we said we'd wrap it up with dessert. Of uh, our, our apple pie and custard, no custard, no custard in Galway. I do not know what is the problem. I'll have to start bringing me on anymore. Um, they had fish and chips, went down well, and then we went to the Keys. There was a bar or a band starting at 10 to 7. And we stayed there at about 8 o'clock, 8 15, and drove back out to Salt Hill. Traffic had uh, was a bit calmer at that point. Uh, we were in the Cliffs of Moher yesterday, we were in Doolan, and we got the ferry at half ten, so there was a lot of driving yesterday. Um, it's a long old trek, and we have more to do today. It's actually three hours, twenty minutes from here to Donegal, to the hotel we're staying in. So, we'll be on the road at nine. Uh, I did say yesterday that there wasn't much to look at. What I meant by that, there's always plenty to look at on the roads to, in Ireland, uh, views or whatever, and sites. I meant the recognised sort of things to look at. Um, I think it was a John uh, Lafferty that put up uh, Knock. I, I always mention Knock to people. Some people don't. Some people sort of, uh, you know, they'll be different, even though they might have Irish background. They don't be Catholics and they don't, uh, you know, they'll drive by and they'll say a prayer or whatever, but they don't want to spend time at it at times. So. I think these couple today um, might be somewhat different. Uh, I did mention it briefly as to leave into the ever hear of Knock. Did they ever hear of Our Lady of Knock? So I might have to sing a bear of that song on our way this morning. Um, I'm in Donegal Town, I said tonight, so um, probably see the usual sights up there. Um, it turned out a great day again yesterday. The sun came out about from noontime on. It, fought its way for a long time to get out through the clouds but it did eventually big crowd on the cliffs of moher again yesterday it's an absolute money spinner that <coughs> um we had three horses running yesterday we had vampire slayer who ran a really good race he went out to 12 to 1 early this and late money came from which is a good sign from a gambling yard so he got placed um and Slightly unlucky, perhaps, that he didn't act on the track, I think. So we'll get him next time. He'll win a race or two at a mile and a half. That was his first step up from a mile uh, on the flat. Um, the other two didn't run so well. Omar, Omar Moretti. I thought he'd run into a place at one point during the race. I was watching on the phone in the lobby uh, down here when I was waiting for them to come down. And... Uh, Sergeant Wilson, I was very disappointed with him. I thought he was better than that after winning his bumper in Taunton. Actually, the winner of the race had won his bumper in Taunton too. Um, a good uh, for Paul Nichols. A good old meatloaf won yesterday. A great uh, servant of ours. He won a couple of times for us before. I thought I might need the run after a break sort of yesterday. That's why I didn't tip it. Um, there was another winner yesterday. Oh, Summer Snow. We, we went for that one time last year. It was a bit unlucky. Um, remember a grey horse that was in Leprestown didn't get a run. And it had changed ownership yesterday. Well, it was in a syndicate prior, prior to yesterday's run, but the same owner, uh, P.A. Kelly. Changed years yesterday from Russell Sullivan to Michael O'Callaghan. I was watching that and I thought I might need the run. Eights into threes and one by hosed up as out again Monday uh, so Michael Callan had it ready um, 
and someone I was talking to one of the I forgot to mention it, one of the guys that I was talking to the night before last night was in the syndicate that won with annexation. We had a tip in the same race and annexation won it. And she's gambled on from twenties into sixes. And they were told by the yard, don't back it first time out. So he was a little peed off, as he said himself. They had no money on whatsoever, not even a token few pound on. But somebody knew. And that's a whore altogether when, when uh, there's a gamble on your horse and you're not involved in it and you're paying the bills. So one of their owners find it difficult to survive at times because there wouldn't be much money out of that race. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to say, Errors was unlucky as well the other day. Um, I was shouting him on even though I hadn't him backed. Um, we had another involvement in the race that done us no good. Uh, the English horse that came over. Uh, but if the ground, well, if it doesn't dry out too much, Gavin Crummer, he's in absolutely tip-top form. You might get a race out of him for the boys. Uh, there's two bus horses running today. By bus horses, we mean horses that we tipped up and won for his last time out. Uh, the first one can do a double. The first one there is this opened up 7 to 4 yesterday evening, Ascending Lark. We were on it the last time. This uh, mare is a half-sister to that Romeo Coolio that finished second in the Cheltenham bumper. Uh, so well-bred. Used to be with Liz Lawler. Um, three bumper runs. Third to brighter days ahead. Even though it was about 21 minutes, that would be a decent run. And then wind surgery. The deadly wind surgery. First time out in Haydock. That's it on the outside there. They're very powerfully on the near side. Comes alongside phone home, jumps on. Ascending Lark then opens her wings between the final two flights and saunters on into the lead here by a couple of lengths. They're still a long way out, however. Dame of the Cotswolds yellow cap is giving chase, then phone home Poppy Rose and wrapped up in rubies. Here's two out. Ascending Lark. By two lengths on landing, Poppy Rose takes a tumbling fall, and they're making their way down towards the last. Ascending Lark, nurse down towards the last. Gets over it neat. The lead still only two lengths. Dame of the Cotswolds sticking to the touch for pressure from Sam Twist and Davis. They've got a furlong to cover on the flat. Ascending lot, drifting off a true line. A trying desperately to raise another effort. And inching closer, Dame of the Cotswolds. 100 yards to go. Ascending lot, Dame of the Cotswolds is chasing. Ascending lot, doing best. Makes a winning hurdling debut and a winning debut. Yeah, she needs to probably hope to come on for the run. It looks to be a match race in the betting. The other one is um, there to Derbenville that's, um, for uh, Nicky uh, Henderson. So we're going to stay loyal. Um, on a bumper, second in Exeter. The other one that's won for us last time out uh, is Sure Touch. Now, the only thing about this is the last time I'd run and won was over 2.7 and it got outpaced during the race to that the very back but it, it outstayed them sort of towards the end and won well. Uh, bet Magic Saint was in a class 3 in Taunton. Uh, went up £7 for it but there's Dylan Johnson rode it that day as well and he was claiming 5. So he's not on it today, it's Sean Bone. So technically that's £12 higher rating today when you're losing the claim and you're up seven. Um, it's a good pot, it's a class two. Um, just have a look at it here, that's it in the, the Stuart colours there. The leader to try, try and throw down a challenge, but stormy fight, Rex Dingle at the third last, short touch in second place, a length down, Magic Saint trying to get involved, a short touch under Dylan Johnston, moves through now at the second last to take it up, and short touch is over, from in second, stormy fight trying to rally, then Magic Saint, but down towards the final obstacle, it's short touch who's come from last to first and is beginning to pull away here, short touch at the last, not pretty, but over to the other side, that's what matters. In second place, Stormy Flight having a battle with Magic Saint, but Sure Touch relentless progress through the final circuit. And the promising Dylan Johnston, who's been riding winners left, right, and centre, rides one here at Taunton, Farley, Murphy, and ggs.co.gk.
I hope the, the step back in distance isn't a problem because if that few to Brazil, that hasn't ran it's for Willie Mullins, it hasn't ran over fences yet. Um, a different kind has won four in a row. Uh, going up the... It's 145 now. Um, good class horse. We were on it uh, way back. I think we're behind, we're back to that day, behind Mystery Bear, was it? Anyway. Favourite four times. It's gone up, what, 20, 20 pounds. So hopefully it's raised its ceiling. So. Where am I? In here. I couldn't see myself for a minute. Right, we'll get this into the oven, it's 10 days. The Beth race on coming up, and then of course we have Punchestown next week. Um, I'll try and maybe dig out a couple over the weekend to see can we get a couple of earlier, early bets up for Punchestown. Bash the bookies over and out. <laughs> 